starting our workout today with the roll downs. So stand with the feet hip width apart, middle of the hip, middle of the knee down to the second toe. Soften the knees, neutral pelvis. Inhale as you lift the shoulders up, exhale as you release them back and down. Collarbones are wide. Zip up that tight pair of jeans and draw in that navel back to the spine. Take a deep breath in wide and fall into the sides and back of the ribs. And as you exhale, keeping hold of that core abdominal lock, draw the chin down to the chest and peel one vertebra at a time, off an imaginary wall behind you, bone by bone. Keeping that softness in the knees, keeping the weight on the three points of the feet equally, big toe, little toe, middle of the back of the heel. When you get to the bottom, shake out the neck, shake out the head. Your body like a floppy ragdoll, no tension in there, except in the navel. Then breathe in wide and full and use that navel to anchor and pull you back up, bone by bone. One vertebra at a time, back onto that imaginary wall behind you. And the shoulders relax back down and the head comes back. So your chin is parallel to the floor, eyes are at eye level. And then you're just going to float those arms up to the ceiling as you rise up onto tiptoes. A bit like your arms are on puppet strings, just letting them float up. Keeping that core engaged. And just squeezing an imaginary ball in between the inner groins. The head floats up to the ceiling like a balloon. And then just like a feather, let those arms come back down and resist gravity as you lower those heels slowly down to the mat. Soften the knees once again. Breathing wide and full and exhale, just drawing the chin down, nodding the head forward and then peeling bone by bone, one vertebra at a time, as far as you feel comfortable. Making sure there's no tension in the neck or shoulders. And then just gonna walk your hands forwards into an inverted V down dog position. Stretching out those calf muscles, bending that right knee, pushing that left heel into the mat. Breathe in to prepare, exhale and change. Bend the left knee, push that right heel into the mat, feeling the stretch in the right calf. In to prepare, exhale, change. In to prepare, exhale, change. In to prepare, exhale, change. And then just pushing both heels down into the mat, drawing those ribs back towards the thighs, shoulders away from the ears, heels towards the mat. And looking up, step forward with that right foot in between the two hands and dropping that left knee down to the mat. Make sure that the right knee is directly above that right ankle and the left knee is way behind that left hip as far as you're able to. So opening out that left hip flexor, left arm in the air, and then just gently twist. So bring the arms to prayer position, or one hand behind the back if you prefer. And remember the body follows where the eyes go, so the further around you look, the more rotation you're gonna get in the head, then the neck follows, then the shoulder falls. Just stay there for a couple of breaths while you open out the hips and the spine. Option to take the back knee off the floor if you feel stable. And then gently release, placing the hands either side of the front foot. Coming into hamstring stretch, you're just gonna straighten as best you can that front leg option to keep that back knee on the floor if you prefer. Just make sure there's no hip hitching on that right hand side of the waist. So pushing the right hip back and the left hip forward. Imagine you've got headlamps on those hip bones and they're shining their high beam forwards. Take a look at the front foot, make sure you're not rolling onto the side of the little toe, that the big toe is down. And try not to Punch that mid-back, so flatten that mid-back bra strap area and push the crown of the head forward, shoulders away from the ears. Take a couple of breaths there. Inhaling for a count of three. And exhaling for a count of three. 
and push the crown of the head forwards. Go to the breathing, inhaling for a count of three, and exhaling for a count of three. Long, so inhale, and slow, deep exhale. And then gently working your way around to the front again. Just taking a little few breaths here. But this time, instead of having the hands here, see if you can bring the arms up to the ceiling. And bring the head close to the floor. And bring those arms as close to the floor as you're able to. Don't force it. If that feels uncomfortable, maybe just put the hands on the shins or the ankles instead. Take a few breaths again, opening out those inner groins. And then gently place the hands on the hips, soften the knees a little and slowly coming up. So, from here, we're just going to turn the feet out, narrow the stance a little bit. And we're just going to take some balance movements here. So just placing the hands on the hips, coming down to a little squat or a plie. And then from here, just gently drag the foot and place it on the thigh. Hold for a couple of seconds, extend the leg and we come back down again. Little bend, drag the leg, place it on the thigh, hold for a couple of seconds, demonstrate you can balance, extend the leg and we plie back down again. And this time instead of dragging the leg, try to pick it up and place it on. So the reason you're dragging it for the first few reps is just so you can gauge the amount of weight that you need to transfer over to one side in order to balance. When you gauge that, how much you need to transfer, you can lift that leg up and then gently down. And then gently up. So aiming to do roughly eight to ten reps on each side. Lifting up. So that this standing leg is getting the chance to do all of the work rather than alternating one side then the other. Do the, all the reps on one side. So this leg starts to fatigue and it can be anywhere from the foot to the calf to the shin to the thigh and to the glutes. Last one. Squat down, work from the quads. And then this time bring the foot right up. Now option to hold the foot with this hand or you can bring your arms above the head. And this time we're gonna hold just for about 10 seconds, demonstrating that you can hold and balance and breathe, keeping those shoulders away from the ears, and then gently releasing. So this time you're gonna transfer the weight onto the other leg. So then drag the leg and then place it on the thigh. And extend out again, drag and place it on the thigh, extend and this time instead of dragging it just try to lift it straight up, staying nice and tall. You want a softness in this supporting knee so that you're not locking out the knee joint as you straighten that leg. Extend and place it down. 
And as you land on the floor on two feet, make sure you've got equal weight between the two feet. And extend, exhale, keeping that core engaged. And ideally keeping your eyes at the same level, looking at the same thing, regardless of whether you're doing the squat plie or the standing balance. Pulling in. And last one. Placing the foot. And again, you can grab hold of the foot. Or you can place the hands above the head. And just focus on the breathing. Inhaling for a count of three. And exhaling for a count of three. Inhaling for a count of three. And exhaling for a count of three. And then gently release. Now keeping the feet together here, what I'd like you to do is just raise the arms above the head and I want you to stick your hip out in one direction and then side bend in the other direction without twisting the hips or without bringing one arm in front. So really keeping the arms straight, keeping the hips and shoulders square and see if you can go a little further. gently coming up, lengthening as you inhale, as you exhale, gently leaning to one side, see if you can go a little further, and then gently coming up and releasing. Now one more standing exercise, so standing with the feet together, so again, it's a little um, balance challenge, a little bit of bar in the equation here. So you're just gonna squat as if you're sitting on a low stool behind you, bringing the arms just in front. Your gaze is just looking down at the floor in front of you. So remember, keep your eyes focused on one thing and help you balance. Keep the core engaged, and then when you're ready, breathe into a pen, exhale, and just raise the heels a few inches and then lower them. Now when you lift the heels up, be careful not to change the height of your head because all that wants to happen is that your knees come closer to the chest and then gently down. Exhale, heels up. Inhale, heels down. Let's do two more. Exhale, heels up. Inhale down, and exhale, heels up, but stay there this time, and I'm just going to bend, so bring the butt towards the heels, and up an inch, down an inch, and up an inch, down an inch, and up an inch, down an inch, and up an inch, one more. Down an inch, and gently release. Again, just stepping back on the mat a little. I'm going to do one final roll down, breathing in. Exhale, nod the chin forward, work your way gently down. And slowly walk your hands forwards and come down onto all fours. So, from here, you want to have a neutral pelvis with a natural lumbar curve. Spread the fingers wide, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, hands are shoulders.
shoulder width apart, knees are hip width apart. Make sure you've got the weight even between all four limbs. Back of the neck is long, so it's not hanging down. Shoulders are away from the ears, elbows are soft, core is engaged. Breathe into the head. As you exhale, engage your core and slide that right leg along the floor. Then you're going to turn your head to the right. And as you lift the right hand off the floor, move your left foot backwards and turn the whole body on its side. Stretch that arm up. Flex the foot. Pull in that rib so you're not sagging, so keep that rib nice and tight. And push your pubic bone forward because there's a tendency with this exercise to stick your butt out. So the most important thing is to push your pubic bone and hips forward, tuck that tailbone under, and keep those ribs locked. Watch this arm doesn't go behind you because if it does, your ribs will flare and pop. So keep the arm nice and directly above the shoulder. So you're gonna exhale, lift an inch. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. So keeping the leg fairly high. If this is too much, you can do this lying down on your side. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Breathing out as you lift. In as you lower. So work in those glutes. Inhale, lower. Out of five. Every time you lift, make sure you're not sticking your bottom out. So keep checking in with yourself. Keep pushing your hips and pubic bone forward. Keep checking those ribs a lot, that you're not hunching the shoulders. And if your neck starts to ache, just look down at the hand that's on the floor. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Shh. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. So make sure that you're at the end of the range of movement so that when you do lift, you get a little shake. Inhale, lower. Two more. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. One more. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Placing that leg down. And then just turning the palms in. We're threading the needle stretch. So bring that left hand through. Stick your bottom out. Look at the lights on the ceiling. Make sure that left shoulder doesn't touch the floor and your head doesn't rest on the floor. They close to the floor, but they don't touch. And your butt is just slightly behind your knees. Inhale as you release. Exhale, twisting the opposite way. Inhale, release. Exhale. And inhale. And one more. Exhale. And inhale. Now you're going to do it with your left leg. So you just stay facing this way. I'm going to change to face the other way so that I can still um, face you, you can still see me. So you're going to extend that left leg out. You look to the left and as you lift the left arm off the floor, move that right leg back behind you and stretch that arm up, flex the foot. Again, make sure that the rib isn't sagging, your shoulders aren't hunching and most important of all, your pubic bone is pushed and forward and tucked under. So you're going to lift an inch and lower an inch. Exhale, lift an inch. Inhale, lower an inch. Exhale, lift. Keeping that core pulled in. Inhale, down. Again, remember the alternative if it's too much on the body or on the wrist. Do this lying on your side instead of kneeling up. Action with the leg is the same. Exhale, lift. Feel like your head is pushing east and your leg 
is pushing west in two opposing directions. Your arm is pushing north. The other arm is pushing south. So your limbs are extending north, south, east and west in as many different opposing energy directions, reaching and stretching out as possible without losing your core stability or your scapular stability. So shoulder blades down, navel pulled in tight. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. And then gently release. Sitting back in Pilates rest position, knees apart, feet together, head on the floor, arms at 10 to 2. And then we're just going to add in a little lat stretch for your latissimus dorsi. So you're going to side bend to your right. So move the hands to the right. And this will stretch all of that left hand side of the spine from your armpit down to your waist. So side bend to the right, stretching the left hand side of the spine. And if you reach the fingertips of that left hand forwards along the floor, like you're trying to touch something that's out of reach, and at the same time, sit your left butt cheek back on your left heel in the opposite direction. That will increase the stretch. And then, to the opposite side. Side bend to your left and reach the fingertips of that right hand out of the shoulder socket, reaching it along the floor. At the same time, sit your right butt cheek back on your right heel. And then gently coming back into the centre. Exercise. 
that diagonal straight line. The other thing is, as you lean back, make sure that you don't arch the back. So keep those ribs, hold it nice and tight. Bring the arms to shoulder height. Breathe into the pair. Exhale, lean back. And again, only as far as you feel able without sticking your bottom out or flaring the ribs. And then gently coming back. Into the pair. Exhale, lean back. Again, this is a little bit more pressure on the knee joints. So if you've got any dodgy knees, don't go back too far or you might want to avoid this exercise altogether because it does put a bit of strain on those knee joints. Age prepare. Exhale, leaning back, drawing that core in and then gently coming back up. So you just want to feel a pull at the front of the thigh in those quad muscles. strain too much and don't go past the point of no return, don't go back too far otherwise you might collapse. Exhale, leaning. Inhaling to come back. Exhale, lean. And then just hold it here. Then there's a little pelvic tilt. Tuck, release. Tuck, release. Tuck, release. Top release, top release, top release. Four, three, two, and relax. Spring your knee. Legs, uh, two straight legs. I'm pushing up through those heels. I'm going to bring the arms to shoulder height. Breathe into prepare. Feel like somebody's punched you in the tummy. You're punched and winded. And then tuck that tailbone under. And one vertebra at a time coming down. And every time, every couple of inches, you're going to say to yourself, re-tuck that tailbone, drop the shoulder blade. Re-tuck the tailbone, drop the shoulders. Every couple of inches. Then inhale, your arms go back. Exhale, arms come up. When the fingertips reach the ceiling, lift the head. And bone by bone, vertebra by vertebra, just peel off. And then you're going to reach forward. Try not to hunch. Try not to round the back. So you're going to lift the breastbone, stick the tailbone out, and reach those arms just above the feet. Flexing the feet. Roll back. If it's too much, put the hands down on the floor. The lower the hands, the easier this is to control. Watch the last third of the movement, don't let gravity take over. Open the collarbones, re-tuck the tailbone every couple of inches, drop the shoulders. When the head hits the floor, inhale. As you raise the arms behind the head, but don't flare the ribs. Exhale, arms, chin, and then peel. One vertebra at a time. Stretching those arms just in front, just to give a little opening in the hamstrings, and then roll back up. If you want to make it more challenging, the higher the arms, the harder it is. The lower the arms, the easier it is. Keep some action in those inner groins, pull up the kneecaps, engage the glutes as well as your pelvic floor. Exhale, arms up first, tuck the chin in, and roll. Into the stretch. This time, lift the arms up to the ceiling, place them behind you. Fingertips are facing forwards. If that feels uncomfortable, you can turn the palms out to the side, or you can have your fingers pointing backwards, but the traditional way is fingers pointing towards your butt. You breathe in, you open the collarbones, exhale, and you lift the butt. And then gently release. Let's try that again. If you want to make this easier, just bend the knees. Still lifting the butt. Exhaling as you're coming up. 
Try to keep the knees together. Try to keep as high as you're able to. And then gently release. Stretch the arms. Flex the feet and push out through the heels. And arms go behind the back. Exhale, arms, head, and reaching up, stretching forwards, lifting up, arms behind you, and raise. Hold for a few breaths. Demonstrate you can hold. Try not to sag. If your shoulders are coming forward, it's very difficult not to sag, so open the collarbones, roll the shoulders back, and use your butt muscles to lift you nice and high. And then gently release. Stretching. And do that one more time. Exhale, arms. Tuck the chin in. Rolling up. Stretch. And bring the arms back. Roll the shoulders back. And lift. Option to lift alternate legs, or you can keep both feet on the floor, or you can do the knees bent version, and then gently release, and gently roll back down, halfway, and then just look where your feet are. Try to keep your feet and your heels in the same position and then come up an inch and down an inch. As you come up, there's a tendency to push the heels away and as you roll down, there's a tendency for the heels to follow you. But if you focus on keeping the heels exactly in the same place, then the movement is really coming from the abs. It's coming from the abs anyway, but it's just a little more challenging when you don't slide the feet in and out. Up an inch. Down an inch, up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch. Two more, one more, and then gently release. Bending the knees so your feet are hip width apart, interlacing the fingers completely. So they act like a hammock to hold the weight of the head. Place the hands behind the head and bring the elbows forward so that they're in front of the ears to take the weight of the head, okay? So remember, the elbows don't flap in, they don't flap out, they stay in a fixed position. If they're level with your ears, they won't take the weight of your head and therefore your neck will take the strain instead. So elbows in front of the ears in a fixed position. Hands in the middle of the skull. Your eyes are looking at the ceiling when you're on the floor, but as you curl up, bring your eyes just above the knees. So we're breathing. Exhale, zip up the pelvic floor. Sit up that tight pair of jeans, suck in the belly, and curl up head, shoulders, shoulder blades, off the mat. Curl up as high as you can. And just watch that you don't um, pull your chin towards your chest to come higher. Come higher by taking another vertebra off the mat. Now most people here stay within their comfort zone. Um, and it's not very challenging in those abs. So, try to get a little shake. So remember that 80% of this curl, you're probably doing about 20% of the work. So, try to push past that barrier where you kind of think that's the end of the range of movement. So where you think the end of the range of the movement is, let's start the movement there and then push another inch or so. And what you'll find is, as you push that to the end of that, so really you can't lift anymore, you'll get a little shake. And that's where all the work's happening. 80% of the work is done in that last 10 or 20% of the movement. So we're aiming for that shake. Then, place the hands behind the thighs. 
And then just bend your elbows and pull yourself up maybe another half an inch using your arm strength. That extra half an inch that you wouldn't have got just using your arm strength. Now the question is, with that increased height that you've got using your arm strength, see if you can hold it as you let go. Now the hard bit is lifting your arms up and placing them behind your head. Because the higher your arms get and the further the arms get back, the arms will pull your torso back down to the ground. So even just to stay at the same height, you've actually got to lift and curl up higher because the weight of your arms will drag you down. When you've got your hands behind the head, just give that extra little lift and then gently come back down to the floor. So that should burn quite a lot if you're at the end of the range of movement where all the work is happening. Breathe in again. Exhale, curl up head, shoulders, shoulder blades. High, high, high. And then, if you're not having a shake, you like shaking, shaking is good as long as your technique is good and your alignment is correct and all your body parts are in the right position, then shaking, it just means you're working hard. So we get a little shake, coming up, coming up, coming up. Place the hands behind the thigh and use your arm strength to get that little bit of extra height that you wouldn't have got without the use of your arms. Stay up there, stay up there and let go. Now here's the tricky part. Try and keep at the same height as you bring the arms back. So you can't just stay at the same height because the arms will drag you back. So you've got to lift higher in order to stay at the same height against the weight of the arms pulling you back. When the hands are interlaced behind the head, give it a little extra lift before you then come back down to the mat. Breathe in again. Exhale, curl up. Head, shoulders, shoulder blades. And whilst you're looking at the ceiling, when your head was on the floor, your gaze comes down to just somewhere just above the knees so that your cervical spine is placed in a good position. Keeping that core engaged, see if you can lift up just that little bit higher, out of that comfort zone, into that challenge zone, where you get that little shape where all the work is happening, then place the hands behind the thigh, bend the elbows and use your arm strength to pull you up another half an inch or so. Then let go, staying at the same height. And then the tricky bit, lifting up higher, curling up higher against the arms that are going to pull you back. Curl a little bit higher when your hands are behind the head. And then gently release. So we're going to do that one more time. Breathing in to prepare. Exhale, curling up head, shoulders, shoulder blades. Curling up, curling up, curling up, curling up. And then some, take another vertebra off the mat. Place the hands behind the thighs. Bend your elbows and pull yourself up. Nice and high, nice and high, nice and high. Let go. And then lift up a little bit higher against the weight of the arms, pulling you back. Lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. And then gently release. Release the arms and just let the head flop from right to left. Loosen off any tension that you might have built up there. And then, placing the hands back behind the head once again. Engage your core, pelvic floor belly button. Float your right leg up, followed by your left leg. Then you're gonna extend those legs up to the ceiling. So you're gonna work your core and your obliques and your rectus abdominis here. So all of the um, abdominals on this one. So we're gonna do scissors uh, and then we're gonna add in a curl up and an oblique twist. So you're gonna breathe and prepare. As you exhale, 
Just push that right leg away as far to the floor as you can maintain a stable pelvis, either neutral pelvis or imprinted spine, as long as you don't arch the back. And then slowly bring the leg back. So we're just starting off uh, with just the leg movement. So remember to make this easy, bend the knees or just don't move the leg as far. You don't have to have the leg straight, you don't have to move as far. You're only moving as far as you can keep a stable pelvis. Okay? So you exhale, pushing that right leg away. Only as far as you can maintain stability. And then you're going to lift up, curl up, and have a very, very, very slight twist towards the left knee. Just a small rotation. So remember when you curl up, it's easier to keep your back on the mat. And then gently release. And then slowly coming back up. So to the other side. Exhale, engage pelvic floor belly button and push that opposite leg away. Try to keep the legs fairly relaxed here. Try not um, to pull up the quads or point the toes because then you start to use the leg muscles. And if you relax the legs, you're going to get it more in the core. Less help from the leg muscles in the stability. And you're going to curl up head, shoulders, shoulder blades. And it's really just a small off the center twist. So remember, your body follows where your eyes go. If you look over here, you're likely to twist over here and over twist. So you've got to watch. When I twist to the right, but my left hip bone and my left butt cheek doesn't follow me. And that will happen if I over twist. So remember, body follows where the eyes go. So look at the knee and then you'll get little twists. It's more about the height with a, a little bit of rotation. I'll also watch here that when I twist to the right back, my left elbow doesn't come in any closer to my face than my right elbow is, and I don't just turn the head. And then I curl back down, and then slowly coming back up. So remember, the slower you perform these exercises, the harder they are, because you've got to hold the contraction for longer. So you can speed up if you need to. Exhale, push the leg away. Inch prepare. Exhale, curl up with a slight twist. Breathing out. Remember, it's easier to keep your back on the floor when your head is off. So just be careful when you lower the head to the floor that you don't arch the back. Really work on the stability of that pelvis and then slowly bring that leg back. Breathe in again. Exhale, pushing the opposite leg away as far as you can keep stable. And then curl up head, shoulders, shoulder blades, slight twist from the steering wheel, from the ribs, not from your elbow, not because you've turned the head. Gently back down and then up again. One more each side, exhale. Right leg pushes away, curling up. Slight rotation, looking at the left knee, pushing that right Hip down on the mat, curl back down, and then slowly coming back. Last one, exhale, pushing that left leg away, curling up, head, shoulder, shoulder blades, gently back down, and then slowly coming back. Bend the knees in, give them a little hug. And just opening the arms out in a T-shape to the side for hip rolls. Uh, if you prefer, you can do this with the feet on the floor. In fact, we'll start with the feet on the floor and then we'll take them up. So from here, you're going to send your knees to the left and your head to the right. Keeping the feet on top of each other. Only moving the knees as far as you can keep this opposite shoulder on the floor. Make sure that if your knees are going all the way to the floor that this shoulder doesn't come off. So you're limited to where you can put your knees by that opposite shoulder being on the floor. Then you breathe in. 
Now don't just bring your legs back, remember it comes from the core. As you exhale, squeeze the ankles, the knees, the inner thighs, the sit bones, the pelvic floor, the belly button. Get those ribs in like you're going to puke. <gasps> and press your back into the floor, using your core to drag those legs back. Breathing in. As you exhale, knees to the right, head to the left. Now as my head turns to the left, I'm going to reach the fingertips of that left hand along the floor like they're trying to touch something that's out of reach. I've got to keep that left shoulder down. Breathe in. As you exhale, squeeze the ankles, the knees, the inner thighs, the sit bones, the pelvic floor, the belly button. Ooh, getting those ribs in, using everything I've got to drag those legs back to the centre. So if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, the legs come in the air into tabletop position. So again, I breathe in. Exhale, engage the core, legs to the left, head to the right. Now, you can take your knees and feet to the floor, but if you do take your knees and feet to all the way to the floor, then you're just resting on the floor and there's no ab work there. So if you can, hover your knees about an inch or so above the floor. And the ab work is to hold it without collapsing onto the floor and to bring those knees back to the center, using your core. Breathe into the pair, exhale, legs to the right, head to the left. Breathe in, exhale, engage ankles, knees, inner thighs, sit bones, pelvic floor, belly button. Who get those ribs in? As you come back, place the spine down in this order if you can. The shoulder blades, the bra strap, the bottom of the rib cage followed by the lower back. And if you want to, remember the straighter the leg, the harder. Two straight legs is, is more challenging on the abs. Or you can bend one knee and have the top leg straight. So you're kind of halfway house. Exhale, legs to the left, head to the right. Breathe in. Use your stomach to pull the legs back. And then switch. Breathe in again. Exhale. Legs to the right, head to the left. Breathe in. in. And exhale, slowly coming back. And bend the knees in. Now we're going to extend that left leg along the floor because we're going to stretch now. Right knee into the chest. And then from here, grab hold of the sole of that right foot with your right hand if you're able to, or you could use a strap if not. And then try to push that right knee down to the floor, as close to the floor as you can get. So you're opening out the back of the right leg, that will be your inner groin top of the hamstring, maybe the glute. And at the, on the left leg, it's the front of that left hip, you might feel it. Then if you're able to, extend that leg out to the side. Now you might have to let go of the foot here and hold on to the calf or the thigh. Then we're gonna bend that left knee, cross that right ankle over the left knee, thread our hands through and just bring it in to the chest. Just stretching out the outer thigh and glute on that right hand side. And then gently release and change leg, bringing that left knee into the chest. And then with that left hand holding the sole of that left foot, pushing that left knee down to the floor. Easy breathing. Feeling it maybe a little bit at the front of that right hip, but mainly on the left, um, back of the left thigh, hamstring, inner groin, glute. And then just stretch it out and take that left foot towards the floor and again you might have to hold onto the calf 
or the thigh. Or you can hold onto a stretch band or strap. And bending that right knee, cross that left ankle over the right knee, thread the hands through and bring the thigh towards the chest. Get down a bit further if you feel. 